Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Vines. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Vines, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Today's conversation is with pastor and entrepreneur, Drew Neal. Now, when I met Drew, I knew from our first conversation that I really wanted to have him as a guest on this podcast because he has such a value for accessing and applying divine wisdom and innovation in business. Heaven has strategies and solutions. And as kingdom driven entrepreneurs, we have access to them to serve the world in the areas that he has called us to. This is a heavenly asset that too few pursue and lean into. But I believe that you'll be inspired to believe for more after you hear this conversation with Drew. But before we get started, I want to make sure you know about our Firestarter School. Firestarter School walks you through key foundations and a practical application to help you confidently partner with God at greater levels in your business. It's all about positioning you to experience his best and have a greater kingdom impact in the marketplace. It's an MP3 audio course available via mobile app. So I guess you can say it's like having me as a mentor in your pocket. And I truly believe that if you are a listener of this podcast and you enjoy what you're hearing and learning, you are going to want to grab Firestarter School. And guess what? Lifetime access to the course is available at the price of your choice. And yes, you heard that correctly. So head on over to our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash Firestarter School and get all the details. Now let's get started with today's conversation with Drew Neal. Listen in and enjoy. Drew Neal, what's up, man? Hi, Shay. How are you? I'm doing really great. I'm glad to have you here on the podcast with me. So thanks for joining. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you and I have had an opportunity. We have some mutual uh, friends in common. And so you and I have had an opportunity to connect a few times prior to now. And it has been a pleasure getting to know you. And I couldn't wait to have you come and share because some of the stuff you told me, man, I was like, I want to share these stories. So, (laughs) (laughs) So let's get right into it. I want to talk all about what it looks like for you in a really practical way to do business in partnership with God, led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So why don't we start this conversation by you sharing what it is that you do in business and how you even got started in business? Yeah, that's great. That's great. So um, yeah, so I, I, my central company is called Solutionary Ventures. It's a holding company for uh, basically personal organizational development startup. I have a uh, entrepreneurship lab startup and I have a funding startup. And so kind of building my ecosystem right now. And uh, my, my background has actually uh, been within faith-based communities. And so doing a lot of Christian leadership, um, I started traveling, speaking, kind of consulting in the church world about 10 years ago and uh, had, was on staff at a mega church, uh, had kind of done the thing, wore all the hats and I just kind of figured out that I knew how to do a few of those things and that I could bring a lot of value to the church world. But I really kind of cut my teeth on learning how to consult and help build organizations, um, you know, there with churches and uh, went on a discovery. I uh, got pretty focused in 2015 on learning how to translate all that into the marketplace and uh, started, uh, I took on my first um, marketplace client, non-church client in 2015 and it's really opened up a lot for me in the business world and also in the government world, actually. Nice. And so it's been uh, just my joy uh, to really uh, bring wisdom and innovation uh, from a kingdom perspective into the marketplace uh, and understanding how to do that overtly and also sometimes covertly. Yes. Depending on what the need is, having... Uh, wisdom as well to know how to present myself and while also leading a church. So yes, I, actually, I, I was going to say, because you pastor a church too. And then I, yeah, I planted a church in 2012. And so um, I really wanted to exemplify what it means to be what I call a hybrid leader, uh, which is really that Melchizedek leader. It's king and priest, right? And, uh, and model that. And uh, so I do ministry 
Uh, but I believe within me doing ministry, there are some things that I do that are for profit and some things that I do that are not for profit, but it's all ministry. Yes. Ultimately, I'm, I'm, there's a financial exchange uh, from the Lord and from people on advancing good for all and yes. uh, excited to explore all that. So, I love it. That sounds good. Okay, so now you told me this kind of wild story uh, when we first chatted about an encounter that you had with God. And I don't know I don't know if that was a, was that in 2015, by the way, that story? Uh, 2018, actually. That's a 2018. Wow. 2018. It's new. It's fresh. That Still. is fresh. Okay. So then let me go. We'll go there in a minute. So when you started, so you, here you are with the church, you planted a church, actively pastoring a congregation. Then you're saying, hey, I would really like to model I would like to model this idea of being in the marketplace as well as in church, serving in both capacity. You start consulting, taking the skills and the gifts you've had in the church world and then translating those in the marketplace. So when you did that, I'm curious because some people, I'd like to say that I would assume this, but you can't assume it. And this is what I've learned. When you shifted into the business world, did you immediately go into business with a mindset that I'm going to do this in a way that's actively in partnership with God, let it empowered by the Holy Spirit. Did you make that connection right away with business that that's how you were going to walk that out as opposed to separating it into whatever, a different world? Yeah. So uh, I'll just be real blunt here is I don't actually know another way. I don't know that you can be kingdom and not be led of the spirit. Like I don't, I don't like I'm not kingdom because I led a church. I'm kingdom because I know who I am. I know who my yes. father is. Like, I can't help but be myself everywhere that I go. And, and if you want to do things with Drew Neal, there's just certain things that are going to happen. There's certain, var- <laughs> there's certain variables that are going to be in play here. And let me just tell you what, if you're my client, it's going to be to your benefit. Yes. Uh, whether you understand them, whether you are consciously aware of them or not. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, who I am as a son gives me awareness and access to know who I am in, as the image of God. And so my sonship talks about my access, but my identity speaks into what problem I solve and the unique experience I give people. You know, it's like, it's like the, 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 the logos of scripture is your last name, but the rhema is your first name. And Break when that you down have some more, so you know, in the scripture, we see the blueprint for for the rights I have as a kingdom citizen. You know, in the scripture, we see the rights I have for demonstrating a life like Jesus. And I know that I've been adopted. I've gained a last name. I have I bear the name of my father, and and I and as a second born brethren to the firstborn brethren. <laughs> That's right. I, I know I'm next in line to access. But just be, it's actually, but ultimately, once you gain that revelation, you realize that that's actually not very special because the whole world has been adopted. Yes. I mean, Jay, you're a, you're a son and a daughter. I'm a son and a daughter. However you want to get into all the semantics of that. (laughs) We're all heirs. There's the word. We're all heirs. We all have his last name and it's, and I've loved the revolution of identity that's coming to the church. But we've only had a conversation on identity from a last name perspective. The break, the next breakthrough in identity is going to be everyone finding out their first name, which is the unique image of God that they carry. Because Shay, you're different than me, and yet you you are the image of God. Your skill set's different than my skill set. Your mindset's different than my mindset. Your experiences with God are different than my experiences. Your history with God has shaped this unique expression of the image of God that I will never, ever have in my vertical interactions. Right. And yet you were made perfectly and wonderfully in his image and his likeness, which means 50% of the revelation of who God is is founded in the vertical connection and the other 50% is observing Christ in you. Yes. So that's so good. So the reason why I even asked that question is because I know even the idea of kingdom revelation coming into kingdom revelation is a process for so many, right? Even people who pastor a church don't a Christian church don't necessarily have kingdom revelation, right? So tell me, so 
actually maybe give me some background and insight into even how you came into that revelation that made a shift for you. Because that's the way, because you had that is the reason why you were able to walk into business immediately knowing that it has to be done that way. Yeah. So I had a, a you know, the privilege of being raised and mentored by a pastor who thought about the community more than his own building. And, and actually we had, we had way more square footage and facilities outside of our main campus than we did at the main campus. Um, we hadn't necessarily built a kingdom uh, under one roof. We had decided to put outposts out in the community and to really understand how to translate who we were into the community. Now, it was still done from that hyper nonprofit needs oriented mindset. Right. It wasn't really from a visionary influence mindset, but the application really taught me a lot about the idea that the gospel needs to be integrated into the community. And so I kind of came from that cloth, if you will. That's my DNA. That was already in me. And, and yet also at the same time, uh, I saw the deficiency and the needs oriented focus of it all because I realized we weren't transforming the world. We were putting band-aids on the world. Mm. And so, and so when I left my uh, assistant pastor at a mega church in 2010, I was really, my, my pursuit was God, how do we transform the world? Like I was very motivated to want to say, God, how does this thing actually translate? Because if people could actually see who you are, how much you care about them, what's available for them through you and in you, why would anyone ever say no? Yeah. Like it's, it's actually logical. Yes. Like, like when, when you understand what's the supernatural and the defying of natural order that's available and the, the multidimensional um, uh, connection that we have both body, soul, and spirit. You know, we have such a, um, a, a, a closed-minded perspective on how God wants to impact us. And it's, you know, and bo it's body bad and someday later I'll be in heaven. <laughs> right. And we see the kingdom of God as an exit strategy rather than seeing the kingdom of God as an entrance strategy. And so there's this, so I, I just, I started going after it. So the first thing I went after was, was miracles. And I was like, well, okay, well, the church needs to be performing in miracles or they're, you know, they're not legitimate because the gospel has to show in power. It's not the gospel. Yeah. And so the first thing I went after was signs, wonders, and miracles, jumped into the supernatural movement, um, you know, revival circles, if you will, and renewal and, you know, sweaty meetings with Jesus. <laughs> and, sweaty uh, meetings with Jesus. <laughs> carpet time, right. uh, you know, all the things that we're embarrassed about that people actually saw what was going on, yes. but were so necessary to breaking down walls and letting love invade and being yeah. captured by the goodness of God. Like yeah. these moments change your life. Yes. Yes. When you realize that you're not a problem, you're a solution. It changes your life. When you realize that God doesn't want to work outside of you or despite you, but he chose you, he called you, he created you to actually move through you. I mean, that's some life-changing stuff. It is. It so there's is. a real shift in my mindset once I realized that the power of the gospel was fully available to move through my life. And so I actually sat on a college campus. We have a Division One university in my backyard, Oakland University. And um, I was on the campus doing campus ministry, actually, about a year prior to this and 2009, if you will. And I was just, I sat in the campus. I was in the big kind of central, you know, hangout community center, the campus life center, if, if you will. And there's thousands of students in there. And I'm just like, Lord, what could happen right now that would change their lives? You know, it's like, if I get up and preach, uh, they're going to boo me down. Right. You know, if I hand them a track, they're going to crumple up and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> right. if, I hand, if I hand them a, a, a bottle of water with my sticker on it, they're going to drink my water and then put my sticker in the garbage. You know, it's like I can do all these gimmicks and do all the things that have been. But Lord, what's the innovative thing that you want to do? And so I wondered about power evangelism. And so uh, if that could be the key. And what I found in my pursuit of power evangelism was that it awakened people to the reality that God would exist but it still didn't disciple people into a transformational life. When you say power evangelism, you mean a, demonstra a demonstration of God's power and because they see God at work, that speaks to who yeah. he is. Is that what you mean to say that? Yeah, very much so. And so, I mean, I, 
I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's the gifts of the spirit, right? It's, it's all of those on display right. and being used as ways to grip people's hearts where they see only God could tell you that. And right. there's no way you would know that. And it's only God that could heal me right now. And it's only God that would love me in the way that love is on display right now. And it's those types of moments where people come into awe and they begin to wonder yes. <laughs> at what the sign is trying to tell them. Yes. And so I really explored that because I believe, you know, a powerless gospel is a, uh, is a neutered gospel and you can't have the good news without power to rescue, save, heal, and deliver. So then I jumped into that and it was, you know, five years later that I realized that the, that those gifts were tools. They weren't an end, end in and of themselves. Yes. And so I started realizing those were tools that equipped me for as I'm going, but where am I going? Who am I going to? And how are these things going to reiterate God's vastness and his greatness if it's not also bringing them into a higher level of living physically, emotionally, socially, culturally, administratively, economically, like all the things. Right. And I realized that the awe and the wonder had to be on display, but it also had to be translated into an integratable, applicable um, outcome that would change the life. Yeah. And, and so that foundation got me 2015. And I realized that my church wasn't changing the city through our signs and wonders. And we were out there. I mean, we were mobilized every week on the streets. You know, we had testimonies go viral, all the things. Woo, God, <laughs> amazing. Woo, woo, woo. Right. You know, all, I mean, we were doing it, you know, yes. invite all the people in, all the names that you guys all know and love that do miracles on the streets. They were all here. We yeah. stirred all the churches up, offended a lot of other people. And, uh, but I began to realize that my city wasn't going to change simply because of a miracle, like we actually had to address the systems of the city yes. and bring innovative and reformational ideas to the table and also have a little bit of skill set on how to implement it. Yes, yes. And, and so we needed, we needed love, but we also needed structure. Yes. And it's in the convergence of love and structure or wine and wineskin or power and authority. I, I can do this all day long. <laughs> right. When they converge, yes. this is the essence of real wisdom to bring us into transformational outcomes. Yeah, that's so good. That was a whole that was a whole word all by itself. So that was really good. Now, so now you go into 2015, you've started in business. Now, talk to me about what this looked like. Um, I don't know whether there, I want to know, because I've got to hear the story about what happened last year, but I want to know what it was like before that and after that. So Talk to me about what it's been like to partner with the wisdom of heaven for business, whether it's yes, government so or it was, business. Yeah, it was baby steps. And, you know, I, I think it was smart. You could also just say it was safe. And I, I could have been more bold, but I, I started partnering with Christian business leaders. So I exclusively was looking for Christian business leaders that would have a value on my faith-based community, church leadership foundation and have a value for who I was at that level right. because I felt like it was important for me to really learn um, in a safe way how to translate who I am into the marketplace. And so I spent three years uh, doing that. Um, and, you know, retainers, clients, consulting, uh, bringing innovation solutions. Um, and so they already had a value on, uh, at a minimum, my faith and my history and many of them had a value on the supernatural and they had a value on the gifts of the spirit. And they were people just looking for a little bit of that organizational edge to mix in with that faith-based motivation. Right. And so they're trying to figure out how to run their business by faith. And I was like, well, you don't run it by faith. You run it by wisdom, which includes faith. Yes. yes. <laughs> but you know, faith and wisdom sometimes are at odd, odds with each other. Because faith says, I'm going to believe for a very specific outcome. Wisdom says, how can I make sure everybody's winning while believing for an outcome? And am I willing to be open-handed about that outcome while making room for other people at the table? So good. And so wisdom will always require the dignity of all because it requires the truth. And for something to be true, it has to set people free. And so oftentimes I found in faith-based circles 
that their faith is really a perspective on what they believe is right, but they've not done their due diligence to understand if what they believe is right is actually going to set people free. Mm. It's going to make them feel good. It's going to validate them. They can tell their story about it. They can have their God story and do all these things. But are people really benefiting from the thing that God did that was a miracle that they believed God for, for 10 years, 20 years, 30, I believe God for this one specific thing. And I always ask the question, it's like, well, if you had faith for it 30 years ago, how many opportunities passed you by that you just did, you missed because you were too rigid in what you thought God was going to do? So good. You know, and, yeah. and how much more impact could you've had if you were willing to adjust five, 10, 15% of what you think is supposed to happen so that you could have application sooner and significance moving through your life you know, 25 years ago. And it's like, I know people hanging on to that same prophetic word, Shay. You know these people. We all know them. And it's like, I think prophetic words have a shelf life. You know, it's like how long, I mean, it's just, I think that there's a lot of opportunity. It's a whole big conversation, right? I don't know when we spend all our time. I was like, that's a whole episode. (laughs) But I I totally, I love what you're saying though. So you're saying it's like, listen, you were working with a faith-based community and a lot of times they'd have a particular vision, a particular thing they were standing on and, and you were helping them take this, Hey, I have faith in seeing this thing take place. And you're saying, okay, now let's bring wisdom. Let's bring truth. Let's bring what's right now so that you can be effective, impactful and steward. Yes. Steward that thing that you're standing in faith for, but let's talk about the now let's bring wisdom to this thing so that you can see the fulfillment with your open hands about what that looks like and what that outcome is. So you can see the fulfillment of that thing. Yeah, 100%. So really the need I was addressing was creating um, the bridge to get out of competing commitments and into a unified commitment that what they see in the natural, you know, their organizational skill sets, their organizational mindsets, their capacity to, to raise funds, to hire people, all the things you need to succeed in business you know, they, they've separated it. And so they have this supernatural value, God speaking, I have faith for this one thing. And then they have their skill set and their mindset over here and they're largely separated. Mm. And then they come into condemnation because they think that their hard skills and their mindset is in competition with their faith. And it's like, well, no, those, those things are meant to come together. They're, so they're the meant bridge. to be together. Yes. So what, I, what I've really done in the faith-based business circles is eliminate the distraction or the idea of division and helping them to build a bridge so that they can reconcile the incarnation, which is a paradox. Yes. Fully God and fully man. You know, Jesus was the divine nature taking on the human nature. We are starting human nature, realizing we have the divine nature. It's the same thing, reverse order, but people have a hard time reconciling the paradox of the incarnation. And so so we've just really increased uh, people's ability to be authentic to themselves while running a business from their values, their their kingdom worldview, and their skills and their mindset. That's so good. Now is a good time to talk about, you said in the beginning, it was kind of playing safe. You're with faith-based communities, faith-based organizations. Then you had this pretty wild encounter with God, I think you said last year, and that really shifted two years ago, which shifted things into a new gear for you. So tell us that story. Yeah. So, um, so I'd been working, you know, uh, consulting and, um, uh, I'd find myself either working with executive leadership teams or I'd show up and do a workshop and get all the employees in the room and we do personal growth, organizational growth, all those types of things. And then I'm pastoring. Uh, I'm also traveling and speaking, doing conferences, mostly in the church space, but I'm starting to get m- some business conferences. If the business hosting it is gutsy enough to put a hybrid on the stage, um, there was a few of them and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I did, and I did well, you know, I like, I, I was growing, I was learning how to, how to apply myself and, and mixed marketplace, uh, demographics. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the mix there and I'm feeling pretty good about that. And, you know, this encounter about ready to share really exposed a lie and I'm, ex- and it really, it's what's opened up. I believe the next step of maturity for what I really believe is possible for the hybrid leader and so I'm excited to kind of get to the end of the story because I think you're really going to be encouraged as a listener um, at what's available here. And so, uh, so yeah, so I am doing marketplace and church, but all with Christians. I get a prophetic word from a guy um, 
named Doug Addison. He's out in California. And uh, he's one of those guys, like if you know him, he's super well-respected, but he's just not known by everybody, uh, but has cr- tremendous legacy. Uh, was a forerunner kind of in the, um, in the movement of, you know, everyone can hear God's voice, which yeah. is a phenomenon that even Baptist churches are teaching now, I see. You yes. know, it's like everyone's quietly becoming charismatic at the <laughs> same time. You know, it's like, what's going on here? You know, and so, uh, you know, they're either secretly charismatic, quietly becoming charismatic. You know, we have guitars and people are prophesying. <laughs> what is going on? Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so I get this word and in this word, uh, he basically says, uh, a major change coming to my life and it's going to be a convergence. And this convergence is going to be initiated by an angelic assignment. And, you know, uh, this is a crazy word, Shay. I mean, I don't know about you. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Like, um, like there, there are circles in the church that I have a high value for, but I don't relate with necessarily. Um, and, and they all believe they see angels all the time. And I love these people. They're my friends and I believe them, but I've never seen an angel before. Um, I have a high value on the Bible, which means I believe that what happens in the Bible is available for us. And you look at the angelic activity of scripture and like, it's kind of hard not like, I don't know how people believe in God and don't believe in angels at the same time. Like that's a discrepancy for me, you know? It's like, well, you're obviously self-selecting scripture at that point and teaching a diluted gospel. So I have a value scripturally for it, but I don't have a value for it experientially. Gaudy word, big word, kind of a word people kind of, people kind of want to have these words. I want my angel. I want my, uh, whatever your theology is on it, you know? And so I just told the Lord in that moment, you know, there's a lot to the word that I'm not sharing, but it's very involved. And a lot of outcomes are going to come out of this experience with the angel. And so I told the Lord, I said, actually, God, I appreciate this, but um, I don't want, an angel unless I can talk to it, interact with it. And I just kind of like double down on the idea that God, I want a hyper biblical experience here. Like I'm, I'm unsatisfied with talk and no game, you know, it's like, right. like I, I want the whole thing. I, yeah. I want all or, or nothing at all. Like just give, give me, give me it all. And long story short, uh, he said it would happen between the months of May and September, uh, May 21st. I'm on an airplane going to Singapore. And uh, I was going to be spending time in Singapore and in Kuala Lumpur, just north of their capital city of Malaysia, and uh, doing a mix of church conferences, church consulting, and I had two um, organizational leadership opportunities as well. I was there with businesses. Busy week. I was only going to be on the ground for six days, actually, and I was going to be very, very busy over the six days. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going there. I'm going to go do my thing. On the airplane, I'm over Afghanistan, and I was over the city of Mosul. Uh, I know that because I was looking at my map in front of me on the airplane, and I was actually praying for my friend who's in Mosul, who works for um, for intelligence for U.S. Armed Services. And so I know that he's there, and I was kind of praying for him. I was actually looking out my window because I could; it was a clear day, and I could see down there, and it's like very interesting. And all of a sudden, um, I'm in Comfort Plus. I'm in the first row of Comfort Plus. And I have space in front of my seat because the, you know, the, the labs are right there. And, and then it's first class. And out of first class, I look up and I see a lion walking down the aisle of first class. And it comes and it sits at my feet and it looks at me. And without moving its mouth, it says, you know, I'm coming with you, right? <laughs> And I, I was like, uh, uh, no, first of all, no, didn't know that. <laughs> didn't, didn't know. Newsflash. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't aware. Thanks for the memo. Now I do know. Um, but you know, and I, I've never seen a physical manifestation of anything in the spirit realm right. in, in my life. Now, now I would, I would say that I've seen, like, I've been in rooms where the room will, the, the atmosphere gets really dense. Yes. And almost like a, like a fog. There's a yes. haze in the room yes. and, and it's spiritual. You know, I'm, I'm, I've done a lot of real estate and worked a lot in construction and, and I'm very familiar with the functions of how a building works in commercial real estate, whatever. I, and the, there was not a, a HVAC issue going on to create <laughs> right, these right. phenomenons, <laughs> you know? 
Um, right. You know, and I've also I've also been in the room where um, literally uh, a white substance was in the air that was uh, long and skinny in proportion, probably about a half inch long, mm. and it would float in the air. And when you'd grab it, it would turn into moisture. Wow. And uh, uh, unreal, a sign that makes you wonder, right? So I've, yeah. had, I've, I've seen some phenomenon like that, but I've never seen an angel. And so now I have a talking lion sitting at my feet on an airplane. <laughs> and I love this story. Yeah. So I am I'm trembling. <laughs> I'm just trembling in the power of God because it's like, this is, ha- this is happening. And so part of me is like, this is happening. And the other part of me is like, I'm somewhere else. I don't know where I was at. But for two hours, this angel manifested as a lion on the ground, seated, and it didn't say anything to me the rest of the time. And it was like an orb, if you will, cycled from it to me, back to itself, back to me. And it was like it was doing surgery on me is the only thing I can tell you. And I have no clue to this day what the people thought sitting next to me. <laughs> there, were, there were three chairs in that row. One of them was inhabited. And I'm sure they were like, uh, excuse me. Can, <laughs> right. I, so, I so can so only imagine. That. But I mean, I think I was speaking in tongues, probably out loud. I don't know. I'm, who knows what was going on? I didn't you care. Were gone. I was gone. And um, so I had this encounter. I get on the ground in Singapore and it's like my schedule's popping. Like, like I kind of got to almost compartmentalize the fact that I just had one of the most wild encounters with God that I've ever had. And, uh, and now I've got to go do the thing that I'm committed to doing. And so I always like to process. I like to write after these moments. I like to document. And I wasn't able, really able to do that. We got on the ground pretty quickly um, after that experience. And um, I did a little bit on the airplane, but I was still just kind of overcome. So we get on the ground, the week's popping, it's really, really busy. And I start to observe the fact that like my productivity was at, was, a, was like phenomenal. You know, like I run a lot, I do a lot. And when I travel, especially when there's opposite time zones, it's hard to be productive back home. Right. And you got to do your best to kind of anticipate that. And then do as much as you can. And then when you get home, you grind to get caught up. And uh, even with technology, there's just certain limitations with the time zones and everything. It's just frustrating. And so, but man, I was killing it. I mean, no, I was like, man, I don't, I don't feel like there's anything waiting on me when I get home. Near the end of the trip, um, I'm, I'm with a financial services company. And uh, one of the partners was a believer, had a value, once again, my model. Yeah. Had a value for who I was, both... Um, you know, from a lifestyle standpoint, supernatural, love the prophetic. And so he gets me in to do, I sat down with, they had 50 agents and, uh, you know, they, they manage a few, uh, few billion dollars. And, uh, so yeah, so I do organizational leadership and talking about purpose and doing a bunch of different things. And, um, so we do the session, I do four hours of development, the workshops, I've got Sikhs, Hindus, Muslims, Christians are all in the mix, Right. And so, uh, went, showed up, add value. We go to lunch with all the partners and, uh, the guy who brought me in, you know, is basically perceiving that the other partners really enjoy the experience. So there's a lot of high value on the moment. This is great. I've, I've made him credible. I haven't discredited him yet. <laughs> right. So, so we were sitting at lunch and he's like, so Drew, are there any observations you'd like to share with us? Wink, right. wink, nudge, <laughs> wink, nudge. Wink, wink. You, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Observations, right. aka prophetic words. Yes. And um, in that moment, it was it was like, you know, like in the movies, like Minority Report and all these other things where there's like a screen, but everything's floating in the air and you can yes. touch it and move things around. It was like a moment like that for me where all the things that I understood about their business uh, that they had shared with me went up on one of those boards and yes. just started to reorganize. Yes. And, and a word of wisdom, what I've found is that word of wisdom is not a new level of revelation. It's actually a revelation on definition that allows things that are relating in one sense to rearrange and to relate on a different sense. It's supernatural strategy. Yes. And so, you know, we've talked, you know, uh, if you're familiar with the gifts of the spirit, as a listener right now, you know, you maybe you've heard about words of knowledge. And so words of knowledge is information that we get from God. They're facts that are already true. 
whether in the pra- in the past or in the present. And so here in this experience, I'm getting a word of wisdom, which is an insight lens, not a hindsight lens right. or a foresight lens. It's an insight lens from the from a revelatory standpoint that was rearranging, honestly, their business plan. And so I just start sharing with them this word of wisdom. And it was a download. I got it right in the moment. Now, uh, this is the first financial services company I'd ever worked with. I am not a financial services expert. Um, honestly, I hate insurance. Uh, I, all my money's in real estate because <laughs> I know what that is and I can touch it. I can feel it. Um, and, and so it's, I, so the Lord essentially just gave, he rearranged their top three products for me and get, gave me a strategy to elevate their number three product to, to lead with their number one. And that then it would open up a third market in Jakarta for them. And 12 months later, they earned uh, $50 million in their company and Jakarta was opened. And I get on an airplane to go home. I'm excited about that moment. That event felt next level for me. Still not fully aware. I get on an airplane. And when I got on the airplane, I had 20 hours of airtime. 12-hour flight, layover, 8-hour flight. And for 20 hours, I literally burnt a hole in my laptop. I didn't watch a movie. I didn't sleep. And all I did was download, 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 download. And it was on this airplane ride that I got this brilliant curriculum um, that ultimately opened up all things solutionary for me. um, That was basically a translator on how to equip what was inside of me and other people. And in that download, I also got a strategy uh, for building financial dignity uh, in a middle class uh, in cities like Detroit that ultimately got me to Washington uh, seven months later with Dr. Ben Carson and his team in Washington giving presentations and then adopting some of the protocols the Lord gave me into the new program that they're adopting for rebuilding the middle class in urban areas. And I begin to, after this download happened, I get home and I begin to realize uh something really shifted because of this encounter, even though I've not really been able to process it. And what I found is it was wisdom. Wisdom was visiting me. Yes. And was beginning to open up my cerebral capacity to love God with my mind. Come on. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And really, as believers, we have not felt the permission to love God with our mind because we felt like our mind was either a problem. We felt like our mind was never going to be good enough to maybe interpret scripture. So we just need to think whatever we think scripture is saying because we heard someone else think about it because I'm not worthy, but someone with a suit and a tie and a microphone, they're worthy. So I'll just think whatever they're thinking. And, or if you're a charismatic, you're like, well, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get too cerebral and, you know, and get in the way of what the spirit is is doing. So I got to just move and ebb and flow. And I can't think, I just got to be open. And yet the Bible says to love God with your mind. And, and what the word of wisdom does is it opens us up to experiences, to learn how to love God with our mind that allows us to encounter supernatural strategies, God's divine intelligence so that we can really move and operate to drive the outcomes of the kingdom that are available on our purpose. Dude, that was rich. Hmm. That was rich. And so one of those things that, I know we have to close here, but one of those things that he, he actually downloaded to you was curriculum and structure so that you can actually help other people walk this out. So are you actually currently doing that right now? You're implementing the curriculum that he gave you the download for and helping others to really love God with their minds. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And you know, uh, if you're listening right now, you can go to divineintelligence.co.co. And I have a nine month school that I'm doing with a dear friend named Brian Orm. And we, the whole essence of the training is to teach people how to love God with their mind. That's so cool. And uh, it's really going to be great. Each month we're going to take, there's basically nine, uh, psychology generally agrees that there are nine forms of human intelligence. And we're going to take each month one of those forms of human intelligence and talk about how to love God with our mind from a supernatural standpoint 
to observe God's perspective and his intelligence on this form of human intelligence. And it's really going to, it's going to change the way we behave. It's going to change the way that uh, we uh, relate with the world around us, to our business, to our peers, to analytics, to financial institutions. Um, we're going to re- really go through a lot of amazing things. So uh, divineintelligence.co and they can jump in on it. I love it. I appreciate you sharing so much. This was really good. Oh, Shay, it's my pleasure. I just, you know, obviously we, we could, you and I could talk all day. For hours. Like, yes. <laughs> like Shay, you have so much depth in you. You have so much to offer. And so many people have been just, their lives have been changed because of what you're doing and who you are. And I just love being around people who carry the brilliance of God and the way that you carry it and, and the way that I know uh, the value that you bring. And in our conversations, I've just so enjoyed uh, your humility and yet your, your very strongly rooted confidence in who you are. And I, I think that's the that. sweet spot, you know, uh, right now that's available uh, for leadership is to be humble about what we don't know, inspired by others, and yet confident about what we do know and what we're yes. called to do. And Shay, you carry that. It's brilliant. Oh, I appreciate you. Checks in the mail, sir. <laughs> Come on. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. I appreciate you. We'll have to have you come back sometime. So fun. Come on, Shay. This was great. Thanks for letting me share. And if I could just you know, leave everyone with this. Yeah, it's go just ahead. That, I just want to say, hey, you're not a problem. You're a solution. You're not in the way of the plan of God. You are the plan of God. God doesn't want to do something despite you. God wants to do something through you. And your skills in business, your skills in education, your skills in arts and entertainment, your skill in raising a family, whatever skills you have, they are not the destination of your purpose. Those are tools to change someone's life. And it may be for profit, it may be not for profit. It doesn't matter if you're making money or people are donating to you. In the end, you're made to demonstrate the kingdom of God and its love and its joy and its peace, demonstrating hope and faith and wisdom. And uh, God wants to do something through you. And so I just want to encourage you, take a risk. You know, yes. go, go do the thing that you know you should do. What do you got to lose? Like no one's going to work on your purpose for you. No one's living their life for you. You need to live for you. You need to double down on yourself. You need to invest in yourself. You need to get trained, get the skills, do the things you need to do because there is significant living available for you. And if there's any way that I can help with that, drewneal.com, there's lots of resources there as well. And of course, the amazing Shea Bynes is a wealth of resources also. <laughs> so get in touch with somebody. Do something different. Do something. <laughs> the Drew, do it. The Drew Neal mic drop. Do something. Something. Take a risk and do something. That's a great way to end. You take care. Thanks, Shay. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.